my name is Nick Hilbum, and uh, I was born into the Jain community, and so that's how I came about my tradition. Both my parents are Jain, um, and so that's the tradition that they passed on to me. Um, and for a while, that meant I really was doing a lot without questioning or really understanding what I was doing. But as I grew up um, through you know classes, religious classes, through discussions, through cultural events, I slowly started to question more and understand more what that meant to be a Jain, both culturally, religiously, spiritually, um, and began to realize that I identified with a lot of the tradition. So what that means to me specifically, some of the central tenets of Jainism, one is nonviolence. And so um, I'm a vegetarian and I've been a vegetarian my entire life, but that's, I saw the direct link between the two. And obviously my parents were vegetarians and raised me as a vegetarian because of their nonviolence beliefs from Jainism. But uh, it just resonated with me a lot. Um, another central tenet of Jainism is anekantvad or multiplicity of views. Um, and so the way I interpret that and the way that I've sort of seen that um, play out is that uh, whenever you're looking at any situation, no matter how big or how small, everybody's viewpoint is legitimate. We're all looking at different sides of the picture. So if you think of that sort of classic fable of the blind man with the elephant, everybody uh, you know, it's touching a different part, that doesn't mean it's not an elephant. And so if you can focus on the fact that everybody has a legitimate viewpoint, but try to get down to the deeper truth that we're all looking at, um, no matter how small or how big the issue again, then I think that um, that really resonated with me because Jainism not having gods, not having a spiritual being that you pray to, and instead having role models um, of spiritual leaders uh, resonates with me because it means that ultimately we're all looking towards the same goal. And if you can just follow examples, whether they be of the Jain tradition, of a Hindu tradition, of a Christian tradition, of a Buddhist, Zoroastrian, whatever tradition or no tradition, um, but we're all working towards the same ultimate goal, then, you know, that I think really just helps and really works with me both in the context I was raised professionally, educationally with my peers. And, uh, and because that resonated so well with me, um, and I thought that Jainism gave me that flexibility in these larger issues and my smaller daily practice, um, you know, that's, that's what my tradition really means to me and why I've stuck with it, um, you know, from birth. Yeah. Okay, so growing up, um, already being from Jainism, which is a very small religion, uh, I think the statistics on that one in 700 people is a Jain. Um, so, you know, generally not encountering many others like myself, especially in the United States and growing up in South Carolina. Um, there, I, I always, always felt like the religious other, even amongst the other South Asian or Indian communities, you know, mainly my friends were Hindu or Muslim, um, and so not a lot of people even within that community have a good idea of what Jainism is. Um, also, because culturally there are so many similarities between all the different South Asian rel religions, for a while I didn't really understand where the line was drawn. Um, and I think so that really was sort of unknowingly my first experience with the religious other. I feel like actually my parents kind of brought me up in both the Hindu and the Jain tradition. I would go to a lot of Hindu festivals, go to the temple, uh, pray to those gods, but also always know at the back of my mind that I'm actually a Jain. Um, but never seeing where that line was drawn um, until I really went to college and I joined an interfaith council. And so there, I think, was my first true knowing experience with the religious other where, one, I had to identify, identify myself on the council. And so for the first time, I identified myself as a Jain as opposed to an Indian or a Hindu um, or a Hindu Jain. Uh, and, uh, and then also tell people about my faith or or how it played in and talk to other people. Um, and so that was sort of, I think, my introduction into a formal setting. Um, and then from there, you know, a variety of different experiences with the religious other um, that uh, just sort of have kept going. Yeah. So I think one thing that I've seen in faith discussions and interfaith discussions, whether they be particularly for the purpose of, say, the Religions for Peace uh, or an interfaith conference or an uh, interfaith dialogue where the idea seems to be that we're coming together for the better good, um, or even, you know, just situations 
conflict situations even that have to deal with interfaith issues or, or interfaith settings. Um, a lot of times I've seen, especially in the past, that the, the tendency is to focus on like differences. So what makes me different than you? What makes my religious tradition different than yours? And who's right or who's not right? But uh, maybe not even talking about who's right, but at least focusing on those differences. I think where I start seeing the conversation change and where I try to ch change it when I'm involved in these situations as well is to not focus on the differences, but to focus on the similarities. So sort of going back to that multiplicity of views philosophy, um, you know, there are definitely differences between all the different faith traditions and, and that can't be denied. Um, but at the same time, I fundamentally believe that regardless of your tradition or your or faith tradition or non-faith tradition, um, we all share some common values. And so if we focus on those similarities as opposed to those differences, I think we can do a much better job of addressing these larger issues, these justice issues, poverty, whatever those issues may be. And I actually think that then we'll be much more effective at it because ultimately I think everyone's guided by some sort of human values, spiritual um, being, spiritual tradition, whatever it may be, but they all share some common values. And so if you can resonate with those, you immediately build a connection with the person that makes them that more, much more interested in working with you on whatever issue it is. Because on some of these things, like ending poverty or you know peace, pretty much everybody will agree with you that that's a good idea and a goal that we're all striving for. But if you start focusing on the differences, you start pushing people away. And you focus on the similarities, you bring them together. And so even in some of the work I've done professionally, separate from my religious traditions or my, my practices as a spiritual being, or as a, as a spiritual, uh, anything I've done as a spiritual being on the ground, I've actually seen that be true. So when I, for example, travel and go work in international settings on the ground, uh, we may be dealing, we, especially in rural settings, we try to find and seek out those religious leaders and those community leaders um, and though we know nothing about what their specific traditions are, resonate on those particular values and bring and bring a connection there and then work towards a larger issue like healthcare or education and have just found that to be a lot more effective. So that's sort of what I think as an interfaith community or people of faith in general, our, our opportunity really is to focus on those similarities as opposed to the differences. Yeah. Yeah, um, so I think the takeaway for them, recognizing that they all already have a lot on their plate that they're trying to do uh, within their congregations or within their delegations themselves and trying to build their communities and educate um, individuals uh, and everything else that they may be charged with religiously or spiritually, I think I would challenge them to, at the end of the day when they go home, do two things. One is to make sure that the messages of that, that are discussed at the World Assembly are that penetrate deeper than just the high level religious leaders. And so really make sure that they're, uh, you know, preaching it or, or delivering it to, you know, their, the, their group of leaders within their tradition um, who will then deliver it to their congregations and get it onto the ground um, and actually make sure that that goes forward because I think a lot of times we have a tendency to, to leave it at the high level and not penetrate further down. Um, the other thing that I'd really challenge them to do is to not just focus on their tasks like building their communities or educating individuals um, and other religious tasks, but to address wider issues and engage with a wider community um, by focusing on those similarities, those common values, those shared, um, those shared philosophies that we all have and that we can, res uh, that we can resonate with.